Um, but right now, I'd like to welcome in my guest this morning. And Teddy, how are you doing? Let me get a mic check from you over there. Make sure everything's everything's great. Good morning, sir. Welcome in. Good morning. Glad to be here. Uh, where where are you uh, traveling from today? Actually, I came in uh, last night from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Froze my tail Ooh. off. Went up there uh, in the blueberry business now, produce. Mm, I love blueberries. Did you bring some uh, blueberries in today? Unfortunately, I did not. I, had I known, I should have brought you some. <laughs> well, I'm a big I'm a big fan of the uh, blueberry because uh, they're good for you. They are awesome for you. And they and taste we, delicious. We appreciate everybody that buys them, too. Uh, Teddy, because we're going to talk about uh, Faces of Death, a, a cultural... I don't even what you call a phenomenon here in America for a couple of, you know, before the internet. And, um, but, but first, how is it you get, got, get into blueberries? You know, I, um, are you a farmer? Do you come from farming? I, I am not a farmer. Uh, didn't grow up in farming. Grew up around animals my whole life. My father was a herpetologist and, uh, but I was an athlete and uh, I wanted to play professional golf. Uh, Explain what a herpetologist is. Uh, a herpetologist is uh, somebody who who loves reptiles. He uh, was one of the foremost uh, leading herpetologists in the world on poisonous snakes and alligators and things like that. I just assume when you said herpetologist, I in my head I, I, I it changed to herb, and no. I just assumed it had something to do with the uh, plants and whatnot. No, no. So uh, all reptiles, and uh, so I grew up around animals my whole life, and uh, you know we had lions and bears and tigers. Oh my, uh, snakes and alligators, and uh, lived a life that. Uh, when you look back as a child and you say, wow, it was really cool. And, um, you know, there's kids, uh, people around the world that don't get to see any of these things. And I was very fortunate to grow up with them. So I have a great deal of respect for animals. And uh, my dad taught me a lot and I'm really appreciative. So, But I played professional golf and I got hurt. Ah. And uh, to be quite honest with you, you know, even though I played professional golf and I'm a, I was a good golfer, I was never good enough to get out there. So and you were on that, like the uh, the Nike Tour, or yeah, whatever I they tried, called those I back. Tried, yeah, I tried the Hogan Tour and some in some um, mini tour events, and you know, I was a golf pro at a country club, and and uh, I mean, I had a good life. But uh, once I got hurt, I knew that was that was it. That was it. And it so blueberry, decide, blueberries for you all day long. I had to make a decision. What what do what do people in the world need? And one thing is health care. Well, I knew I wasn't going to go back to med school. Uh, I didn't finish college. And the other thing is people got to eat. And uh, I literally started uh, at at a Walmart distribution center driving a forklift. And I just just swallowed some humble pie and said you know what this is I, i've got to do this and yeah well how old were you at that point oh god i was like in my early 30s oh that's a horrible time because you're yeah. right talk about because there's a lot of pride at yeah, that you know point you know? you know they're still in your head you're like oh i can still make uh, the, the uh, tour i can, I can yeah, still make the tour yeah it was it was tough and i uh, was married and uh, had small children and it was tough and uh but anyway i, I because of that, and you know, Walmart recognized that I probably had a little brain, and I got to go to management, and and just one thing led to another, and be, and I was in the meat and produce side of the business uh, at distribution level, and and I uh, was very fortunate that it made some great contacts, and it, it just grew, and 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 I really got to where I like blueberries, and I work for a company called Sunny Ridge Farm. With, and now I work for a company called Wish Farms. They've been in business since 1922, and I run the blueberry division, and we're one of the largest strawberry growers east of the Mississippi. And, huh. and we started a blueberry division that was about half a million pounds year-round. We're going to probably push 30 million pounds this year. All right. Well, good so, for you, man. Love it. Well, let's, let's, let's go back a couple of years. Let's yeah. go back a couple of decades because I would imagine this is all post the original Faces of Death. So, yes, it is. So, Faces of Death. Uh, Let's talk about what's your association with Faces of Death. So, in the beginning, I was just a kid. Uh, my father. Uh, I go back to my dad. Okay. Uh, Faces of Death originally was a uh, documentary. It was called Fear. And Fear was a, uh, a documentary that was based on people's phobias of dying of what they do. I, a policeman being shot in the line of duty. Right. My dad being snake bit. Right. And uh, it took off in Japan, of all places, because Japan typically likes 
more of the horror type movies, not some of the slasher movies that you see today, but you know, like the Godzilla type things and, and well, uh, the ring, if people remember, you know, watch the ring, uh, that was originally a, you know, called Rangu or something yes, like that. Yes. And, um, and they said, well, wait a minute, we can take this and do something a little bit different with it. And so the production company was approached, uh, that did fear and, um, they said, we want to kind of sensationalize this and we want to kind of grow it and uh, make it a little bigger than what we what we think it can be. Now, your father originally did Fear as a documentary. Now, right. the footage that was in the original Fear, mm -hmm. was that all real footage or was that reenactments? All that's, all that's real footage to my knowledge. Okay. okay. Yes. All right. Uh, but now, now, I don't want people to get confused because we're getting... Fear predates Faces of Death correct. by just a little bit. Correct. And then it takes on a life of its own from Absolutely. there as they start to pepper in reenactments come to find out come to find out yes. son of a so uh yeah so faces of death came along and they approached my dad and said listen hey we want to come back to florida we want to film uh a snake bite and uh and essentially a real legit to, one uh, well we recreated it. oh so okay it's, okay it's it's me uh you see me on the floor and it's at my parents house how old are you now I am 17 at the okay. time. Okay. <laughs> Child uh, labor. <laughs> yeah. And uh, my sister's in it. Uh, all my friends come over there in it. And uh, long story short is we, uh, I'm the snake bite victim. I happen to be going into the kitchen. I hear some noises and I ri lift up the bottom of the cabinet, what was an old wooden deal. And, and there was a rattlesnake pit. And I, I get bit, and next thing you know, you know, the ambulance shows up, my father shows up, the Polk County Sheriff's Department shows up, and you see my dad coming in and getting the snakes off of me and stuff. Now, at that time, these snakes were, uh, I was a dummy laying there, but a lot of times you see the cutaway of my face, and it's the magic of TV, right? right the magic right. of a camera. Right. And uh, it goes from there, and you see my dad in action picking the snakes up and uh, dealing with it, so... And uh, we also did an alligator scene there. And one of the more famous scenes in Faces Death history folklore is my father actually playing a park ranger on a boat. And this was in my parents' backyard on a lake. And he throws a rope in to catch an alligator that's been a nuisance in the neighborhood. And uh, unbeknownst to the world, I... Uh, grab the rope because I'm in the woods in the in the reeds there and we pull him in and you hear him ye yelling and flailing and you see all of us and then cut a month prior to that we'd sent him to California and they made a complete dummy of him head and all right so he goes in with the alligator he's wrestling this is real footage alligator's mouth taped um, cut throw the dummy in there and the alligator has a heyday and yeah. And there you have a scene. Um, it is. It was just a couple weeks ago uh, when I first called you, but it was right after Chords. You right. know, my my partner on the show here uh, told me about all this, and he goes, "You remember Faces of Death?" I'm like, "Of course, I remember Faces of Death." He goes, "You know, half of that stuff, half that footage in there is stage." And I just my mouth dropped, and I couldn't believe. It. He's like, "Yeah," and I know a guy talking about you. Um, if you want him, I'm like, "Of course, I want this show. You're you're ruining my childhood. What are you doing?" <laughs> And uh, and so I did a little uh, research at that. You know, I got off the phone with him and, uh, you know, go on the old Internet. And I saw that this was I don't say it was blown out of the water, but the expose was done just less than a year ago. Now, there'd always been, you know, rumblings right. that, you know, there was people look at this footage. And go, Man, I don't know. That looks staged there. That looks staged there. And so this was all validated a year ago. Or has this been the cat been out of the bag for a long time? I think it's probably a combination of both. I think there's just a faction of people that just want to believe it. Yeah. Okay. And 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 that's great. Uh, I, I will tell you that in in making of Faces of Death one, two, three, four, and the worst of Faces of Death, which is a compilation of all four of those, um, we recreated a lot of footage. We bought a lot of real footage. I mean, there's boat accidents and things like that. Um, but we created things like uh, I did the Rodney King beating before there ever was a Rodney King. Before before beating at Rodney King was cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
you know, I, 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 unfortunately for him, it, it came to came to fruition. But uh, we we created this thing in Los Angeles where we had a neighbor with an old style on his shoulder video, the very first video camera, and the police pull over this Hispanic and and they just beat him up. And this guy's got it on footage, and he turns it in, and you know we've got the news fake news guy there the whole nine yards and it just and you were also fake news before fake news is cool absolutely and uh so it it's um you know we did things like magician you know having the spikes of death and and i i I just remember being in my office one day and i said you know and i love magic there used to be a place in los angeles called the magic uh castle and all the magicians would go there and and practice their 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 trade you know in front of other magicians and it was a kind of a cool club and and I said, uh, after leaving there one night, I said, well, you know, what if one of these things went wrong? And what would happen? You know, this guy's supposed to leave and, you know, escape out of this thing, and it doesn't happen. Right. And so we said, well, let's just do one. And we did. We put the magician in there, and we got the, we got the girl, and all of a sudden, this spikes of death's going to come down. He's supposed to have escaped. Well, he doesn't get out. I, 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 truth be told, I have to let you know, I don't think I told, I don't know if I told you this when you and I first talked. I've only seen one scene from the original Faces of Death. I think you told me that it, it bothered you so much you left the room. Yeah, I'm, I'm a sensitive. I was a sensitive kid. I'm still as a man. I'm still sensitive. You know, I uh, you know that is not my thing. I don't watch horror movies. Right. You know and whatnot. I didn't. You know that wasn't my thing as a kid either. But yeah, there was a group of us teenagers, and somebody popped in the old VHS that you know the the lore, the mythology yeah. that went around. You know, surrounded it at the time uh, that these were all actual deaths that you were watching i want to say the first it was somebody try to jump something a jump a ramp uh, i think we had a car a car yeah, yeah. it was that in the very beginning of the that movie was one of the very first ones it might have been the second one yeah okay that was it as soon as i saw yeah. that i go i'm out yeah. <laughs> i don't need to i don't need that and, in my you know, and we did some things you know we you know nobody goes in and, and films an autopsy nobody films an electrocution um those were all recreated and um Long story short, we just literally, we had a lot of fun with it. We we were able to bring a lot of locals uh, in the areas that we shot in, uh, be a part of something, and uh, we had, we just had the most fun uh, doing it. And it took on its own uh, following, right? And we called it um, one of the things that uh, our our director and co producer would call it was, it was reality tv before there was reality tv yeah i was one of the articles that i read you know i don't want to st- i would love to steal this line but uh it said um it, it called you the first viral video viral video the first viral video and yeah. in a sense i you know i can see what they're saying they're yeah. right yeah it is true because when that thing was being passed around as i was a teenager i didn't even know that it had been released in theaters in the late 70s yes i thought it was just a vhs thing yes and, and of course nobody saw it in the late 70s but it, it just took on this its whole cultural thing. And so then in the 80s, you could go, what, what they used to have what's called the midnight showing, and it'd show like maybe the Rocky Horror Picture Show and Faces of Death. And the theaters would be packed. Well, that that's what I was just showing the camera here is this, uh, hold on, let me do this again. It's a Faces of Death 4 right. certificate. And is this your is this you or is this your kid? My brother. Oh, your my brother. Dad. Okay. Yeah, my older brother. So you actually got a certificate coming out of the theater saying <laughs> I survived Faces of Death Four. Hold on, you sign it there at the top. This date is dated uh uh exactly today. No way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, it's dated February twenty eighth, nineteen ninety three. Um, and it says, after viewing the horror epic, I survived. Only time will tell if I will mentally be the same. Signed, Angel of Death. <laughs> I didn't even know those were going around. Uh, All right, so if you're just tuning in, um, we have uh, Teddy here, who's a, who was orig- originally associated with Faces of Death because his father shot the documentary Fear. And uh, then that, then another production company saw that, get, you know, called you guys and said, uh, or called your father and the production company said, hey, Correct. we'd like to take this to the next level and, and really sensationalize this and, and take and it I over would the say, top. I wouldn't say a next level. I just said like a different street. I mean, 
just a totally different avenue. You'd have to know my father too. He's very, uh, you know, he's a very serious guy, and uh, he takes his trade. You know, again, one of the most respected herpetologists in his field in the world. I mean, he he's written army survival manual techniques on snake bite and things like that. Oh wow! And um, so for him to kind of just take it and run with it and really have a good time. It was fun to watch him as a kid because he was always so serious about his work. And uh, he really had a great time with it. And uh, like I said, we all did. My, you know, my mother was in it. My sister was in it. All my friends were in it. You know, my high school buddies would come and I'm like, yeah, we're shooting a movie. Come on down. I went to high school in Ocala and they'd all drive down. So you're from, I'm from Ocoee. Yeah. So I'm from Ocala. I grew up in Ocala and, uh, and we had a great time. And, and then, you know, these things happen, and, and what happened was there was a separation where years went by, and Faces of Death continued to grow. And so the owner of the production company called me and he says, hey, we want to do number four. We want to come to Florida. Can you put it together? And I said, why not? So, sounds like fun. They wanted, to, they wanted to reenact, the, they wanted yeah. to come so back said, to you getting eaten by snakes yeah. again. So they said, well, listen, we need some, you know, we, first of all we need some ideas and second of all we need people i said okay uh so we did uh basically a junkyard where you know a guy he's out there working and all of a sudden this van falls on him right on his leg and well i said well i've got the perfect guy for this guy i went to school with he's a little heavy set real boisterous he'll have a fun time with this you know and uh long story short we recreated the whole thing blood and all broken leg just ambulance and if you really pay attention to faces of death when you watch them there's so many young people in these you'd say if you really thought about it say well there's no way that guy could be a paramedic he looks like he's 20 (laughs) you know you know or uh you know if you go through it and and i don't know faces of death for i i probably am in it four or five times but you know i have a mustache you know or a beard or just back of my head you know but because we couldn't always get enough people and and the other thing we're on a budget and so you're you're trying to work within the frames of a budget and and um anyway we were able to pull it off and we created a bunch of scenes we did a a bungee jumping scene here and where the college kids tried to do it and they just did the wrong math and the guy goes kaplunk and um you know and then after you pull off a scene like that, you're very proud, aren't you? <laughs> oh, my God. It looks like his head actually yeah. splat. Oh, well, yeah. that was great. So great you, job, guys. You know, so, you know, it's funny. So I go to the movies, when, and I have kids now, and, and you take them to the movies, uh, especially. I have a middle daughter who, who, she does like horror movies, you know. And I remember when she was just, she would sit with my dad and watch Jurassic Park for hours and hours and hours, and she'd be three. And um, she that you know, daddy, you know, how again, again, you know, and it's like, I understand how it's made, you know, and I understand that it's fake. So if I go see a movie like that today, I don't even really jump or anything just because because in your head, you're going, oh, great technique. Yeah, I wish. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we should have used that yeah, uh, that camera you know, so angle ourselves. Yeah, you look at it totally different, you know, so it's again, the magic of the camera, the magic of the cut. Bring in the dummy, bring in the stunt guy, you know, or makeup or whatever the case may be, you know. And, you know, one of the things that I heard all these years was um, when people have heard that I was part of it, they said, well, how could you do the monkey brain scene? And in one of the movies. This is uh, one of the famous scenes, because although I didn't see this, I've heard about this over the years. One of the famous scenes is that uh, in Africa, they've eaten monkey brains. And... um, we said we were going to recreate that. So, you know, we had the monkey. It was a live monkey. And you bring him in. You put him down and cut, right? Not cut the, not yeah. cut the monkey. Cut the cut. tape. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> you cut the tape. You pull it out. You bring the fake monkey in, which looks amazingly real. Right. Right? And it's cauliflower and jello. Cauliflower and jello. And it looks just like. Now you know how to brain. make monkey brains. And it's amazing what you can do with KO syrup. And food coloring, yeah. and food coloring, and uh, and then that was your father, right? That was your father that was eating the brains. No, no, no. This oh, was another oh, guy. Yeah, okay. No, 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 no. This was my dad. Only did the uh, anything that had to do with the reptiles, alligators, snakes, that kind of stuff. Um, what were? How are you credited 
Or how were the actors and the players credited in the original film? So, um, truth be told, um, the production company is a very reputable production company. And um, we did a lot of great shows, a lot of animal shows and things like that. And um, as you know, credits are your resume in this business. Right, right. right. And... Um, so and with we, SAG, you know, there's a certain rules that, are, right. you know, like we come to find out after this uh, last Star Wars, I found out that back in the day, the original Star Wars, that George Lucas was fined $250,000 because he wanted Star Wars to begin the way it did with that scroll, right? Right. Well, Hollywood doesn't want that. No, they want director's names and the, the lead act, you know, whatever needs to right. be up there first. And he's like, I don't want to do that. It's going to ruin everything. And they go, okay, well, you could pay $250,000, which in the late 70s might as well have been a million dollars compared to today, I would imagine. Right. Pretty close. And um, and then he was kicked out of the director's guild or he had to resign from the director's guild. But anyway, so back to... So what we did was we all agreed because we, we were very proud of all the really good stuff that we had done that we wanted to create a, a separate entity. Um, and I took on the name of Andrew Theopolis. My name is Andrew Theodore and, um, I'm Greek. So we went with Theopolis. And, uh, so I co-produced, co-directed and, um, <laughs> Jack of all trades period. But yeah, that was my title. And, uh, I was Andrew Theopolis and, you know, and, and there are several people in the movie that that wanted their names as a credit because right. it is a resume. Right. right? You, you need it. Whether it's your editor, your the guy that's doing the filming or narration, music, it doesn't matter. Just so many people behind the scenes. And uh, all those folks took real names. But then we found that we were short uh, of names. So we would put Juan Valdez in. And so there were too many people in the film and not enough names on, right. this, on the yeah. credits? <laughs> you know? Dummy A, dummy B, so dummy we, C. You know, we came up with, you know, some names and, and stuff. And we just, you know, it turned out to be a, just a fun, fun, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, it was intense. Uh, it was... There was some yelling back and forth. You know, I don't like this idea. You can't do it this way. Over budget or, you know. All the, yeah, all the stuff that you have, problems that you have and challenges that you have. But at the end of the day, we all could sit back and laugh. We all could sit back and say, you know, people are going to watch this. Now, uh, when it comes to the, uh, the the sequels of Faces of Death. Right. Um, at, at what point was it known when, when the kids were going to see Faces of Death Four right. in 1993? Were they going knowing that this was all set up? This was just more of a horror flick than anything, or did people still in 1993 going to see Faces of Death Four think that the the footage that they were seeing was real? I think they still thought it was real. Okay, yeah, I really do. And, and I, I don't think it's still, you know, back in those days. Obviously, we didn't have the internet like we have it. Uh, I don't even know when the internet started, to be honest with you, but. Uh, the internet today, you can look right. at anything, and um, and I think people have come to realize that, you know, it's kind of like professional wrestling. There's there's just a faction of people that love it, and doesn't matter to them. Right, right. right. Doesn't matter to them. Right. It, whether they want to admit it or not, and there's a lot of people that are just doubters and they'd never watch it. Blah blah blah. Well, and I I think Faces of Death is somewhat similar to that on the same parallel that. I think if you are a fan of Faces of Death and you get together with a group of your friends and you have it on DVD or download it from the internet and you want to watch it and have a good time with it, you're still going to do it. Um, now, going back to the original Faces of Death, because that came from you, the documentary. It, by the way, is the documentary Fear still out there and available for you know, people? I don't if they know, want and I meant, to, I meant to look it up before I came today, and I, I didn't do that. I did call the production company, and, and they don't have it. Um, they don't know what happened to it. They don't know what happened to it. But um, Does your dad have a copy anywhere? We've looked. Yeah, we have looked. He really. My dad is in his eighties now, and um, you know his health isn't what it used to be. And and um, you know his memories are great. And um, we sit back and watch a lot of these things that he used to do. And uh, he, um, I wish I could find it for him. I really do. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna. I'll continue to look. We. We did a show uh, years ago when I was a kid. I, I just happened to be a, a, just a, a helper, but it was called The Rattle of Death, and it was a very, uh, really good show on, um, 
you know, back in those days, there was Animal World and Animal Kingdom, and uh, or Wild Kingdom, I'm sorry, and uh, Marlon Perkins and all yep. that. And my dad did this one called Animal World, and um, and it was about you know how snake venom is produced and uh, anti venom, and uh, they did a show uh, with him in it, of catching rattlesnakes and processing the venom and all that stuff, and. So as he's gotten older and retired and, and, you know, his reflexes aren't what they used to be, uh, you certainly don't want to mess with the poisonous snakes. So, um, but I've tried to find some of these things and put them together for him. So he's, he really can see it. He, I think, I think people take things for granted. I took, certainly take my golf. I, I have nothing left in my golf career, you know. Just, right. Can you get out and play recreationally? Oh, I play a lot. Right. I play a lot. I want to get out and play good, then. I'm still a good player. And, um, you know, I, I, Are you shooting in the seventies every time you can go out? I, yeah, I think Seven? so. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. I think so. I'm just, I'm just, si- I'm just sizing you up, you know, in case yeah. you ever get out of the links. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know some stuff. Yeah. Um, well, let's go back really uh, to the fa- uh, the original Faces of Death, and it is some of that footage in there actual real footage? Absolutely. Okay. How do we know when we're watching a, the original Faces of Death? Uh, what's the the real footage and the stuff that you set up? That's a great question. Um, to be honest with you, I haven't watched Faces of Death in a few years, and, and I meant to watch some of it before this taping, and, and I, I've been traveling, and I haven't been able to, but I don't know that you could tell. I, I would say this. If you think that <laughs> oh, it's... Hold on real quick. I just want to go I want to go real quickly some of the comments that are happening, because you know we stream live on Facebook, okay. Google, right. I'm sorry, YouTube, uh, Periscope, Twitter, all that stuff, right? So someone goes, what? Like, they, they can't believe their mind's blown that, the, you know, that stuff wasn't was set up. I haven't watched Faces of Death since I was a teen. They were, the, they were the true horror films of the 70s, 80s. Nothing like them. That's coming from Christine. Also, uh, she says, you have to watch them all. And uh, Joe says, I watched all of them, and oh, that stuff was gross. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say how you could tell the difference is if you really think it's it's one of those things my dad used to say, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Okay. So if, if you think that somebody could go in and watch somebody being executed, that that's not going to happen. Okay, so right? so the the more gruesome, the better the scene yeah. in the original Faces of Death, the more likely it is that it's not real. Correct. All right, so just off the top of your head, can you remember a, a scene or two that no, that one's definitely real footage that uh, we had procured. So a lot of stuff that you see that we get from overseas, um, uh, let's say terrorism bombings, things like that. Uh, that's all bought footage. You can oh, okay. you can go to like the Getty Images or whatever and. And, and you pay for, you know, how many minutes you use. And, um, and you buy the license and, and you insert it. And uh, there you go. And then uh, you've got faces of death. And you've got faces of death. <laughs> but, and when you compile everything together, the real footage, the recreated footage, and even the stuff that we may have made up, um, it looks real. And um, it just, again, I go, there's talented individuals. You know, you think about, you know, I come into this facility today, and um, we're not in a very big room. No. Nope. And technology is, is amazing. It, and, you know, 30 years ago would have taken maybe five more people than it takes today. I, I don't know that for sure, but what I do know is it's amazing what you can put together with technology and people's talents. And even though we didn't have the technology back then, we had people that had talent whether it's makeup, whether it's special effects, whether it's camera angles. Um, I, I can remember a scene where we did, uh, we went to a cremation. Um, we were going to film somebody being cremated. And I remember the owner of our company saying, you know, it'd really be cool if somebody would crawl in that oven and take a picture of the door closing. Now, of course, the oven wasn't on. Well, in Faces of Death 4, that is the opening scene. Oh, wow. Of an oven door closing, and we literally were inside. All right. Uh, well, listen, this has been really fascinating. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming in today. Had a great time. You know, especially for those of us of a certain age, uh, Faces of Death is, uh, I don't know, it just is part of our upbringing. Whether you were like me and walked out of the room as soon as the kids <laughs> popped it in, or like most normal kids, you stayed there and you watched the entire thing. You but, know, it's funny, as we, one of the times when we were kids, had some people over, my sister, I'll never forget this. And I had to walk out of the room because my sister and I were laughing so hard because we knew what would happen. We knew how this was filmed. 
And I remember one of the one of my friends saying, "Well, your dad's in the next room. How do you get eaten by an alligator?" <laughs> and uh, anyway, so. well, we're looking forward to seeing you in Faces of Death Five. I hope we do. I think we, I hope we put one together. Again, so it was fun doing it. And is it still the same production company out of uh, Japan that calls you for this stuff? They still yeah. own all the rights to it. And yeah, they do. Um, as far as I know, uh, again, I've kind of lost touch with it. I've uh, been out of television business for quite a while now. It was in, the blue, in the blueberry business. In the blueberry business. So eat blueberries. I I, I will. I'm, not, I'm a little uh, I'm a little bummed that you didn't bring a bushel well, of them. I'll bring you some next time. If we do something <laughs> like this again. All right. When we go play golf. Uh, I'll go play golf anytime. All right, when we go play golf, we'll uh, we'll bet blueberries. You got it. All right, thank you very much, Teddy. Hey, thanks, you guys. Have a great day. All right, you too.